So uh, the plan today is basically to rework something we did with uh, Elis Buda, 2011 and Zorich, and the question is whether uh, it fits into the framework of geometric recursion. So for the presentation of the talk, I will first make some uh, go start with a geometric recursion, more or less, or some ingredients we saw during the seminar, and then go to the, what we did uh, for computing these volumes. <coughs> so, let me start. So, in the paper of Mirna there are constants that are called BGN, but in the first of the papers, she does not make any link with the Masoric volume, but these are the numbers. So this is the numbers uh, known study, and they will define them precisely now. And they are very much related to <coughs> the work of Maya Nozakani on counting uh, simple closed curves on hydraulic subjects. surface, I might mean two things, but they are equivalent in the same. It might be a hyperbolic surface of constant curvature minus one. When I want to talk about the distances, distances with respect to this hyperbolic matrix. And sometimes I will require the, the conformal structure on the surface, that's the complex structure. Because uh, in the sequel I will uh, work with quadratic differentials. Uh, and once you have a Riemann surface, you can look at curves on the surface, and among them there are very special curves, uh, the simple one. So, you um, pick uh, gamma. And I will not, yeah, it's a fixed curve. Uh, it, uh, and because it's hyperbolic metric, it has a unique geodesic representative. And we will be interested by the length. So anytime I have a curve, not necessarily simple, uh, I can look at the length of the metric uh, x. So this is the hyperbolic plane. And what I will be interested in is counting uh, them. But I will count with restrictions. Uh, and in order to do that, I need to look at what is the the class modulo the action of the matrix class group of gamma. So one example of this, uh, if you look in genus 2, <coughs> there are finitely many combinatorial possibilities for a curve, for a simple closed curve. <coughs> Either it will separate the surface, and if it does, it needs to separate into two parts of genus 1. So this is one of the possibilities. And the other possibility is that it is non separated So you have only two topological types. And for G equal two. So just separating, non-separating, and if you go to higher genus, you need to tell how many genus you put on each side when it's separated. And to formalize that, uh, you, if you start from a simple closed curve, you look at all the curves that you can obtain by uh, applying the mapping class group of the surface to gamma. So these are, this is the mapping class group orbit, so the orbit under the diffeomorphism. Orbit of gamma. 
And this is topological type. This is what I mean by topological type, is the orbit and the mapping type. And so each time you have a topological type, for example, here separating or non separating in genus 2, you can count uh, how many of length less than L you have. So S, that's the uh, X. Uh, let me put the gamma here. So this will be the number, sorry, this is the number of uh, simple flow curves. Oh, let me try to find this. Uh, so the number of k time in the mapping plus group or bit of uh, gamma. Uh, so that each length with respect to the metric on X is smaller than L, L that is here. Uh, so far so good. And the theorem of uh, my other thing is that this uh, SX gamma L grows with an exact polynomial asymptotic. Uh, as I go to infinity, uh, it's some coefficients that I will call C gamma divided by this DGN L to the 6 G minus 6 plus 2 N. And oh, sorry, there is a because I forgot something. X appears in the equation. Introduced. Uh, I kept the notation of my arm for B. It's not the B of the geometric recursion. Uh, and actually, uh, BGN will be the integral of X, of this B that is here. So let me explain what is uh, for that. Uh, and C gamma will be a rational number. So uh, where? Uh, C gamma. should think of this one as just the proportion of curves of type gamma among all possible curves on the surface. So it's like the proportion or probability or asymptotic density, I don't know what you want to call that, but of uh, gamma. Uh, and the important uh, thing here Oh, and G, oh, there is G and N. Uh, so G and N, as always, uh, of genus G, N functions. Uh, and you want this to be hyperbolic, so 3G minus 3 plus 2 N, this number here, you assume that it is not negative. Is it important if it's functions and not boundaries? Or? Uh, in the statement, I'm, yeah, I will make it punctures, that is the length of the boundary of the are zero. But this theorem is still true, but it's not a BGN that will appear here, but it will be a BGN with various mm -hmm. parameters. But you, you can, I believe you can do everything. You have to check carefully that this is properly integrable. This is quite plausible. And then that should go down. But I have no idea how to express this number in the case of that should be, that might be wrong. Uh -huh. I did not check carefully. And for the interpretation with the mass weight volume that we have, the parameters with the Li are somehow irrelevant. So this is why I will ignore this part. Uh, and B. So to understand who is B, we, I need to introduce, so who is B? Uh, so let me write what it is and then let me explain what it is. So it's uh, the first volume 
up, so it's doing to go. of simple closed curves. So, uh, it's not compactification, but uh, like you, you put all simple closed curves into a, a space like this, as you can imagine. So, a nice space uh, where, so I will tell you what nice means, a nice space where a simple closed curves are integral points. So before telling you exactly what is this, in the case of the torus with one mark byte, so if g equal 1 and equal 1, this nice space is R2. And the simple closed curve are the so-called primitive points uh, in R2. And Three, 
But if you start taking a geodesic that passes infinitely many times through here, you need to introduce this measure. So measure is a generalization of this intersection number. Uh, uh, together with a transverse measure. And the transverse measure is just a, a rescaled version of this intersection number. Uh, transversion, that is, uh, for each transverse arc, uh, the transverse measure, let's call it mu, no, mu is bad, uh, let's call it m. Uh, so what is the transverse measure? So to each, uh, to each arc, uh, I in X transverse to the I want to be able to define a number like this so this would be a positive number uh, non-negative, sorry and if it's an intersection if I move a bit uh, the green to the top the intersection will not change so which is uh, n bar n Under uh, so what I mean by invariant and arrogant is it, if I measure the length of this transverse arc and the length of this transverse arc here, uh, yeah, let's pick the point for example. I get the same answer. So same. So this transverse measure is just a way of defining how much time you intersect your thing. And a generic measure for relation is not a curve like this. It's a transverse it's a cantor set. Where when you see something, in part of the surface, it might just lambda is not likely to fill the whole surface. It's like a small subset in it. And if you pick a generic measured for lamination. What you will see transversally is a cut of sets. So you have plenty of leaves that relate to each other everywhere. Uh, so far, so good. And so if you see the definition like this, you say, ah, that's a leaf. But actually, it's very nice. This space has a very nice structure. So uh, in order to be able to, yeah, no need, MLX. So I believe this is due to the first one. And now of X has a piecewise a linear a uh, piecewise an integral piecewise linear structure, sorry. An integral piecewise linear structure. Uh, and it's homeomorphic uh, to a to a ball in R six G minus X uh, six plus two N the same number of the here. Uh, and the homeomorphism does not tell you anything about the in, the piecewise linear structure. The homeomorphism is just about the dimension. Uh, it's a topological space? It's a topological space, but moreover you have some special yes. charts so that the changes are uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, piecewise linear, so you are yeah. allowed to have breaks along hyperplanes. And there is a notion of integral points, and these integral points will not be exactly the single closed curve, but the multi curve. So you are allowed to take a union of disjoint single closed curves. Uh, you cannot repeat several. You can repeat several times. It's yes, it's, it's the same thing as having a coefficient on your simple closed curve. In, in the case of the James Tutorist, the simple, the primitive points are at the front, and when you start taking multiple, you get the whole yeah. Z2 as integer. So this is the same phenomenon that appears here. You have the primitive points that when you do not repeat, 
And when you start repeating, you have multiple and you fill all integer parts. Integral parts in MNX. Are the curves oriented? No. So then your measure is positive? Yes. Uh, this is why it's positive. Yeah, it's a geometric intersection. So it's, uh, it's not much it's some kind of quadrant uh, for the torus? It's uh, r plus squared or it's r squared? Uh, ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. It's no, all homeomorphic, I, I agree. Uh, I think it's the wall R2. Uh, that sounds weird because this one, yeah, minus quotient by minus identity, probably, yes. Yeah, yeah probably there is a similarity at the origin. Yeah, I have to check that. But yeah, yeah you're right. But there's no zero length curve. curve. We don't look at zero length curve anyway, so there's no origin. No, yeah. So we have to open half plane. Uh, half plane. Uh, So let me describe quickly the integral structure. And because there is an integral structure, there will automatically be a measure. And this measure is the Thurston measure. So we have a measure there, which is the, yeah, there is a Thurston volume. And this Thurston volume is a volume of this MLX. So I tell you how the integral points allow you to define a measure. Uh, and I need to tell you what is the length of uh, a lamination and a length of lamination is just uh, the length it has with respect to the hydraulic measure. If you think of this as a MLX, just a, as I said, a sort of a continuation of the single closed curve, you just there's a unique way of extending the length, hyperbolic length, to, to the laminations. So basically, you should be able to understand the terms in the definition. Uh, I want to, yeah, I'm, from here I want to tell you how, uh, I will not define right now precisely what is this piecewise linear structure, I will do in a moment. First I will just say how this, the fact that they are integral, integral points uh, gives you a canonical volume form. Because this is very elementary and you know already how it works. A problem. So if you want, just in the case of RD and with DD. And the thing is that if you have ZD inside RD, you can define the Lebesgue measure uh, looking at uh, number of points in boxes. So, the uh, back measure of u, so if u is a number set, the back measure of u is just the limit, uh, as, as you make the grid small, of the number of points when u intersected with the epsilon, epsilon dd, and you need to rescale by epsilon to the d. And here it will the same. Because it's piecewise linear, you are allowed to rescale. And if you have an open set in MLX, uh, you just rescale by the epsilon. You multiply by epsilon to the dimension. And this gives you a measure. So in MLX, do the same. This was just to emphasize that you just need a way, if you have a notion of integer points and a way of rescaling, you have a measure. This will appear once again later with the quadratic differentials. So this is where I'm sort of emphasizing it.
what Paul was doing when he was counting lattice point in the modern space. I think. If you have some power, you can look at integer length. And you can see scale. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I guess you can count. Ah, yeah, in the case of the torus, yeah, you get this uh, counting of three G points in the two. That appears. Oh, and there, in Genesis 2, there is only one topological type, which is. Uh, so all the primitive points are indistinguishable by the mapping class group action. Oh, and the mapping class group acts on this space, and in the case of the torus, this is just the same to see the action on the half. In the so you say there are two topological types. In the universe, yes. Okay. Two, not one. Yeah, in the one, I want to say. In the one, there's one topological type. And the mapping class group action on MLX, which is just the half R2, yeah. is SL2Z, actually. And in the universe, two, everything is worse because the, the action is piecewise linear, not linear. In the case of the torus, it's linear, complete, but in the case of the two, it's piecewise linear. What is the unit ball for L point X? Yeah, I need to define the piecewise linear structure first. Oh. And then I need to define what's in this function. And this function is just the length. So here is the variable. This is the how Maya Miyazaki write this. So it's the length of this curve for the hyperbolic metric X. Uh -huh. And you are able to measure length of curves, but you are also able to measure the length of a measured lamination. Okay. Just as a way of compatibility things. So, oh, so you said this, that because you have a notion of distance, you have to, the unit ball makes sense. You just look at all the measure lamination for which the length is less than one. Ah. And then you pick the step first and measure of this ball. And this is what the term of fact. So if you never saw this uh, measure lamination and this was in our structure, so uh, just to get you to give you a rough idea of how uh, Thurston has proven the theorem that is here. Uh, it, you have nice charts on ML of X. So, and the charts are just uh, what are, what's called the train tracks. Uh, should I try to give an example? Yeah, I do not prepare any examples. So, uh, yeah, it might be hard to draw an example in Genesis 2 and prepare. Sorry. And so, what's the train track? It's a graph that will embed in the surface and it will have coordinates, linear coordinates on it. And this linear, each point in this linear coordinates will give you one element of this space. Uh, and so you have pieces that are just polytopes uh, here that will be charts for ML of X. So this is the simplest way to describe things. So how it works? Uh, so the train track. Yeah. So there are plenty of topological subtleties with train tracks that we will completely avoid. So the, basically, what you should know about this is that uh, it's uh, an embedded graph. And together with the specification, so at each vertex of the graph, you have, uh, so, yeah, in a, this is not, uh, you, you want differentiability, uh, an embedded graph with uh, derivatives. So this is not smooth, so not smooth. So what you have in the train track is a uh, tangent. Like this one is fine. Because each adjacent edge has a well defined uh, there is a unit tangent at the vertex, which is the this direction. So and if you have more than three uh, adjacent edges at the given vertex. Uh, you are allowed to do something like this. There is no. Yeah, you are allowed to have four on one side, three on one side, but you should choose your side. At each vertex, you have the edges on the right, edges on the left. The left and right are not well defined, but they are two sides. And you should think of this as an input output. 
And so, and there's some topological uh, condition on that. So, for example, you talk about loops or things like this in the graph. But uh, you, there is a weight space associated to tau. So we want it to the bottom of tau. <coughs> so what you will do, you just uh, think of, uh, instead of having edges, you will put uh, like a rectangle on, the, on each edge. So this is the space of the lambda. And lambda is not innocent. This is the same lambda that is here, but in a coordinate version somehow. So for each edge, you choose. Uh, so E of tau are just the edges of tau. So you choose a positive number for each. Oh, actually, none. Yeah, let me write it like this. That's ambiguous. Um, so you choose a weight. And that satisfies the following condition. Uh, you want the number of elements in the input to match the number of uh, the weights of the output. So uh, for each vertex, and uh, you want the sum for uh, e in uh, let's call it e in v of lambda e equal to sum e in v out v uh, of lambda e. So what is e in e out? You just yeah. For each vertex, you choose an in and you choose the out. You choose a it's local orientation at the vertex. But the equation is symmetric in in and out, so it does not matter which is in and which is out. And I claim that each element of the weight space is a measure lamination. And how does it work? Let me do it for integral points in there. So if lambda is in w tau intersected with z, so I should lambda e like a vector. It's a vector, yes. So because lambda e indicates just the weight of one edge of the edge e. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, it's a vector. You want to weight for each of the edge of your tree. And from a, an integral weight, I can build a simple closed curve. So how does it work? If this wedge Imagine it has weight 3. What I do, I just replace it with 3 pieces. Now, this one, there is a certain um, Imagine that there is a switch of this vertex. So there are two of them. But by the switch condition, you know that the number of pieces here matches the number of pieces here. So if, for example, if it's 2 and 1, what you will do as a picture is something like this. And by definition, it would be a union of curves. It might not be simple close. So the result of this, is a multiple. And by definition, it's an integral point in, a, in the space of measure lamination. Uh, so let me warn you about something. When people talk about multiple, there are two, two camps or sides, I don't know what to say. Uh, that's right. So uh, ambiguity on terminology. So some people think that multiple is the a union gamma one, uh, a union of disjoint. So definition one, multiple about disjoint union. of uh, non homotopic uh, simple closed curve. You also mean non non homotopic? Uh, yes, also. Yeah. And ordered. No. Or, or ordered or not, not ordered. Not ordered. But this is not the, yeah, I'm just mentioning this because sometimes people write logicers and things about this. But in my case, this will not be good. Because if you, yeah, in this definition, if lambda is a weight, two lambda is also a weight. 
And if you pick two lambda, it's just two copies of your of all of the components. So it means that in this definition, uh, it will not work. Two lambda will not correspond to a multi curve. So the way to make the definition that works is to pick a multi curve as a form of sum. Oh. Either in this definition you're allowed to repeat components, so you remove this non monotopic or you think of this as a form of sum of AI gamma I, with AI being uh, and the same in gamma I. So here, say now, do repetition. And the one we will use is this one. So and sometimes people say primitive for this. Mm -hmm. And what is clear from what I said is that if you pick an integral weight from train track, you obtain a bridge curve in this definition, not in this one. And what is the measure lamination? It's just uh, what you obtain as a picture when you pick a weight that is not integral. I like to say. And if you want to think of this as a limit of curve, this is possible because you pick your weights, you multiply by 10,000, you pick an integral point very close to it. And then you have a very long curve in your surface, and you divide the intersection, the, you have a transverse measure, and you divide this interse transverse intersection by 1 over uh, 10,000, and you get a, a very good approximation of your measure lamination. So, in this sense, it's a compactification of the curves. So, it's a projective compactification. It's a compactification of the Formal sums of uh, simple closed curves with rational coefficients? Uh, yes, yes, this is true. Yeah. This is that in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see that here on, on this, yeah, here it, this defines a, a polyhedral cone where I'm able to make sums, and this is what is the piecewise linear structure. On, on this chart, I have well defined uh, linear structure. And the thing is that if you start gluing together different charts, you'll see that there are things that you are not allowed to, uh, to sum. For example, if you have this uh, simple closed curve here and this simple closed curve here, you are not able to sum them because you would have something with intersection. Every time I have things without intersection. So this is some two curves that you would not be able to sum. So this is why it's only piecewise linear. Uh, all right. Good. Do you know what is the first term measure? Do you know what is an L? So now the definition should be clear. Oh, and this is just so you know how to measure the length of one curve. If you have this, you know how to define. Yeah, I tell you how to define the length of this. So the length of so if lambda is the sum of AI gamma i with a ai rational or yeah let, let's do it for a multiple and then everything will scale the length of this uh, oops sorry for x is just the sum of the ai length of the curve and then if it's rational coefficient you kill the denominators and just make one over the denominator in this equation and by density you have a uniquely well defined length for measure lamination. So you have a nice function L on the on P that is uh, analytic. The unit ball uh, is yeah, some open set. And you just pick the third term norm of it. Right. So now it's time to define PGN. Uh, that's in the main layer in here. So what is BGN? Is the integral of this B function. Oh, I, I already said that, I think. But with respect to what? With respect to the uh, by Peterson metric on the modular space of Riemann surfaces of genus G and N functions. So B is a nice function of the modular space. And yeah, the if there are basically two questions, whether the small DGN satisfies some kind of topological recursion and whether the big B satisfies some judge recursion. Uh, and what I we make a pause right making spiral thing, I think. Uh, 
So uh, my plan is to make a pose, and what then what we know how to do is to make a formula for this small BGM. So you'll see how it looks like, and it involves the the polynomial, the, the volume polynomial of Miyazakani, or at least part of it, you will see. And so there are many ingredients that are in favor of the topological regression, but it's not clear whether it's satisfying. Yeah, if you have any question on this part, I can try to answer them, or else we need to stop break and change subject somehow. Mm -hmm. Why do we pick the white Peterson? Metric and not the Peshmer. Peshmer, uh, it's a volume, sorry, it's a volume form. It's a volume form. Yeah. But the point is that this is equal to the, uh, the Mazovich volume of uh, something that I will talk about later, which is the, <coughs> the moduli space of quadratic literature. Yeah. Q1. This is the Mazovich volume, this integral. So basically, this Mazovich volume lives on the quadratic differential side. But when you project it to the Dashima space, it disintegrates this function of the And so, can you patch together these weight spaces for different train tracks to form like a moduli space hmm? of these? And like, is that do we know? How, is that related to yeah. either of these mm -hmm. moduli spaces? Where? Exactly. Because here I'm working on your one surface, right? Yeah. Here the surface is fixed in Oh, the okay, sorry, sorry, you're fixing. And then, but I mean, the white space, space seems independent of the x, right? Yes, the point is that mlx does not depend on x. But the function l of lambda, this depends on x. Yeah. But mlx silently does not depend. It's, yeah, it's a structure that only depends on the topology of x. Yeah, you should, yeah, this is a very good point, this is topological. The only real ingredient that depends on the geometry, this is the... Yeah. The, the, sorry, in, in the definition of the measured lamination, you said that it's a uh, union of geodesics. Yes, which is geometric, but the point is that any any curve on the surface is a unique geodesic representative. So if you have one lamination on one surface and you change the metric, there is only way, one way to stretch the other one to fit the new metric. So you can pass one from the other. So formally they are not the same, but they are in canonical bijection. And the, that preserves everything, the integral structure and the piecewise integral structure. And yes, you, you see it here on the chart. And so if you quash, is it then there's an action of the mapping class group on these yes. measured lamination? Yes. That quotient space. Oh, is no, there no, a no, space? no, there is no quotient space because the action is uh, ergodic. I see. This is a theorem of measure. Uh, ergodic with respect to the First measure. So the action preserves integer points, but if you pick a random point in there, basically it orbits is dense everywhere dense in this case. And this fact is an important ingredient in some of my other So is MLF, it's a, is it a kind of analog of Taishmala space? Or? Actually, it's yes, but under some non trivial homomorphism. <laughs> but uh, here it's a, you fix the surface, so. The Taishmala space, you also fix the surface. You are right. Yeah, you do a simple closed curve on the given surface. Um, In some sense, yes, that will be clearer uh, in the next. You know, we make a break, after the break it will become clearer, but it's very close to the tension of space. Okay. But under some non trivial 
from the model. But uh, I mean, the, the reason why I was asking that is maybe one conclusion is that ML is contrived onto time and spaces for the ah, yeah. Because then yeah. you are not forced to use Because you have an axiom of a class group, you can look at functions, maybe, and see. stuff and so on. Okay, sure, yeah, you're right. And it's basically we have a similar space um, where you, you don't care if there's this sort of in and out. Uh -huh. this is, it looks quite similar. But ah, okay. Yeah, maybe this is the... Okay, yeah, yeah, because it's very flexible, maybe the way is just to change the space. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, so the end of the, the result of GR is always something which is not in the loop invariant. Mm -hmm. So since your actions are godic, Mm. I guess it uh, there is one function, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the problem is that the length is not all open class group in the But yeah, one like, one other possibility for target space is this guy, uh, which is just the and on the dumb of this action is not a good thing anymore. Okay, it's a discrete action again. Yeah. So what uh, this is a second part ah, yeah. Okay. This is basic this is roughly ML cross ML with diagonal action. Uh -huh. uh, you need to remove something here. Okay. And when you do that, you have a discrete action of the mapping class group and you can quotient. And uh -huh. oh sorry. I wrote few one of NGN, so this is already the quotient by the mapping class group. Okay. So this is what's Q Yeah, Q stands for first. And then you explain what the mean is. And uh the stupid question is double, is it can I think of the, the analog of this uh, simultaneous uniformization? Uh, was it was where you consider T sigma cross T yes. sigma bar? Yes. Uh, but in burst uniformization, yeah, you have two Riemann surfaces that uniformize. Uh, it's a bit different. I think it's the same Riemann surface. Yeah, here you have. It's the same surface, or the same surface, topological surface. With the yeah, let me tell you quickly what's this. These are just so if you have a surface x, you can look at q of x, but for the quadratic differentials, they have an x, but all more quadratic differentials. Uh -huh. And if you have a quadratic differential, it defines canonically two measured laminations, mm -hmm. which are given by the real part and the imaginary part of q. And so this explains this map. If you have a quality differential, you look at the real and imaginary part. And yeah, perhaps I could, should put something like this. Or oh, you need to pick a square root, sorry. But yeah. the real and imaginary part allows you to measure transverse length. And this defines variation, and this does tell you how you get the So you only need two because if you vary the angle, take real part of. But then you get another, yeah, it's a quadratic differential on another Riemann surface. Mm -hmm. The Riemann surface does change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Start again. Yeah. okay, so the aim of the second part is to show you a formula for BGN. And because the formula involves the intersection of psi classes that appear in conservative recursion, it's like a hope that is. This will satisfy some kind of topological recursion. And Big B might satisfy some uh, joint recursion. So at the end of B, or let me call it BGM perhaps. So there are two approaches for this. So one approach is uh, I will not give details about this, but we have like any approach. So actually, when she computes the integral of 1 on the moduli space, how does the proof go? It's very funny. She writes 1 in a very complicated way uh, with the uh, machine identities. So this is the integral of an empty sum. Which involves many of terms, so this is the matching identity. And then there's an exchange of some integral, and she's able to compute the integral of the pieces. 
And the pieces are basically what appears here. So it's basically one piece of this thing here. So and what is magic in this computation? That is not part of the drug computation as far as I understand it. There is a kind of, uh, I don't know, people know that is a kind of uh, Ziegel transform. So at some point, she's able to transfer some integral uh, into a sum. So let me make it clear. So if you have any function from R plus to R plus, uh, you can transform it into a function of a uh, surface. So, uh, or you fix also a, a topological type, so gamma is a given topological type, of curve or multi-curve, topological type of multi-curve. And if you look at f gamma of x, so for x, x in uh, mgn, you define f gamma of x to be the sum over all eta in your class, perhaps I should write it like this to make it clear that it's a, it's a mapping that's boarded, of f of eta. So you just apply the function f to all the curves in your mm -hmm. f of l length eta. Oh, there is a length somewhere? No, there is no length. What is f of eta? Because eta should be a positive number. Oh, yes, thank you. F of L eta of X. Yes, yes. of course. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and there is a formula in, the, in her paper that tells you what is the integral of this over MGN in terms of the integral of F. And this is where the magic of one. Oh, there is no entity anymore. So there is the theorem. So you need the integrability condition on f, let me ignore that, but the integral of, uh, of f gamma with respect to the bipedal symmetric is equal to uh, some coefficient which depends combinatorially on the curve gamma that you fixed, and there is an integral uh, of something like this. Uh, oh, there is a big gamma, there is the x, and there is x to x, and there is that. Uh, VGN of uh, a some volume polynomial. So we already saw this kind of uh, formula, so I will not give detail, and I don't want to go into detail anyway because this is not the approach. And this is the main ingredient to make the computation because she has a recursion for these polynomials. And then computing an integral with an explicit function is not complicated. So in our case, uh, BGM, uh, you know it's a, the uh, unit ball, uh, unit, yeah, the first time measure of unit ball. But this is not really a function in this sense. But what is BGM? How did I define the measure? I define the measure as a limit of intersection. So BGN of x is actually the limit as L goes to infinity of the number of integer points uh, in uh, the ball of radius L divided by uh, the ball uh, L number of x smaller than big L. You can put a dot and you divide by L to the 6G minus 6 plus 2N. So if you fix an L, this is a function now, and you can do the integration and then it will leave. So this is not really in the framework of this, but this is the limit when you translate up to L. So this is how her computation goes. And what I will do is really different, but it turns out that the answer is basically the same.
So I will completely ignore the value Nelson measure. Uh, what I will do is to use the fact that BGN is uh, also the measure of what I denoted Q1 of MGN. So why this? Well, I will define what is this and this. But the reason why uh, these are the same number is not uh, trivial at all. Or at least to me. Uh, so this is easy to define what is this space. So if you have a dimensional space uh, over a given topological surface, this is just this bundle of quadratic differential, of holomorphic quadratic differentials. Bundle of holomorphic quadratic differential over TS. Uh, and the version with the GN is just the moduli space version. So Q and GN is just uh, this quotiented by the magnetic transformation, which is discrete on this. Uh, and there is a one here, which is important, otherwise the measure is infinite. It's basically, this space is uh, it's a vector bundle, right? So it doesn't matter. So this is a projectivized version, and this is a canonical measure on this projective equation. So what is the... How do you measure... There is a way to measure the area for the differential. So to Q, you can look at the following norm, which is just the integral of the absolute value. This is a two form on the surface, so it makes sense. And so Q1 of Ts is just the uh, uh, product differential uh, of norm less than one. It's kind of unit ball, as we saw in the first version. Uh, now I need to tell you what is the integral structure, and this will tell you what is the Mazovich method. Uh, as in the case of the. Yeah, let me mention that the spaces are very close. Q versus uh, ML, so the quality differential. Uh, you need to be careful. Sorry. Uh, if you are given, if you pick a quality differential on X, I, I, as I told you quickly before, you can look at the real part and the imaginary part. And this gives you two foliations on X. Uh, and what is the, what are these foliations? Uh, if you look at dz squared, locally, what is dz squared? You have a z, which is well defined, and you have simply the, so this is in, this is not true, because when you look at the integral for the imaginary part, you get the number of times you intersect the horizontal. So this is the picture of him, and this is the picture of real. And locally, a quadratic differential is always like this. So this is how it works. But sometimes you have zeros. So what happens at zero? Uh, if you have something like this, which when the differential looks like this, what happens is that you have a picture like this. So this is for one, yeah, for the real part and for the imaginary part, you have a sort of complete picture. Mm -hmm. Ah, so the space is in the in and the real. So maximum. Yeah. Just one question that I feel Shana was asking me to make an answer. These are measured foliations. Uh, Laminations. But for yeah, use, for use, use, for use, 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 use the same. Measured hmm? lamination, measured yeah. foliation. Hmm? 
the formally no, because the objects are different, but there are there is canonical isomorphism. Okay. But yeah, you're right. This is a formally this is not a lamination because the leaves that you see are not geodesics. What you have to do is for each leaf you need to stretch it for the hyperbolic metric to really get the measure lamination. What do you mean stretch? Isotope it to uh, but here I'm making a picture for DZ and this is clear that you can glue uh, locally all these pictures. So you get a bunch of, if you follow one leaf of this foliation, you get a, an infinite curve that is not intersecting because the picture looks like this locally. Mm, what do you mean and that curve? Okay. The, the connected component, you pick one piece of the leaf and you start looking at where it goes. Yeah. It's like solving an ODE for this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you get this infinite curve, you can look at what it looks like for the hyperbolic metric. It is likely not to be a geodesic for the hyperbolic metric. You just look at the geodesic in the... In the representative of in the class. class. Yes, in the homotopy class. But they are not... When you say infinite, it's not closed? Or not goes to... No, so, some, some of them might be closed, some of them might not be closed. Yeah, both cases appear. And you see that I have similarities here, so some of them are not yeah. geodesic actually, so you just ignore them. You take the colors. Or one option is just to to allow, yeah, like here you define three infinite curves. But yeah, you ignore them and take the closure, it's like that. But yeah, formally, foliation and lamination are not the same, but they are in kind of go as well. Uh, yes, and yeah, the point is that this map is not surjective. You miss something that I called delta before, uh, which is the Basically, a quadratic differential is defined everywhere on the surface, so these two must fill every piece of it. And this is exactly what is, this delta is. This is the pair of curves, so gamma one, uh, sorry, pair of foliation, lambda one, lambda two, uh, such that for all gamma uh, curve, the uh, Stephen plus curve, the geometric intersection of lambda one plus gamma, or, yeah, one of them is non zero. Or another way to say it, the intersection, the sum of the intersections is not zero. So basically, like on each piece you see something. So it's quite an explicit set. And it's basically a diagonal because each time you pick one, if you fix one of them, the set for which lambda 2 satisfies this condition is an open net. And yeah, this is a theorem of Hubbard and Major that this is a Homeomorphism. Uh, uh, what? Sorry. Uh, this is where I need to be clear. Uh, this is on the quadratic dimension. So this map and you see the uh, bijection between the whole space of quadratic differential of the diagonal space and the product of ML. Uh, it does not let me call it ML of S because it does not matter who is the choice of the surface. But it's a fixed uh, product of surfaces. So during that you get this map and you see the normal morphism. Uh, all right. Uh, what I wanted to tell you is that uh, what is the the integral? Yeah, the piecewise. You, there is a piece. So uh, this is not very difficult. But there is a piecewise linear integral structure. On two of x on q. So, how does it What is an integral point in there? Uh, so, one way to define this piecewise linear structure is just to pull back the one that you have on the right. And under this homomorphism, uh, you see that it's an integral point 
If and only if you get uh, intersections, uh, you get uh, so in the sorry, let's start again. So the integral points there will be just the frame images of the integral points there. So it means that the image is a two multiple multiverse in this picture. So the question is, what are the quality differentials so that the images are a pair of multiples? And these are exactly the, what, is, what we call the square type surfaces. So integer points. And what is a square type surface? Uh, but you build a surface from squares, but it's not any quadrangulation. So should really call it square type surface. There is a condition on the gluings. Uh, you are not allowed to mix uh, horizontal and vertical. So you have squares. But yeah, you, yeah, you fix. But the squares have some colors somehow. You have blue and red. And anytime you choose two squares to glue together, uh, blue should go to blue and red. You are allowed to do this side. Oh yeah, let me this function. So an example of yeah, I have two examples. Ingenious two. So example one is you have six square like this, and then two here, and then you will tell you where it is going to be. And example two. Ah. So you will need space on the right of the examples. So the squares are always the same length. Yeah, one by one. Okay. And yeah, it's not clear on my picture, this one. No, it was not clear in my head. So these are two examples in genus two. Three, one, two, three. So this is four, and this is four. This, oh, sorry, no. These two sides are four together, and four is going here. These two sides is called six, and is going here. And in between there is a five. Okay. okay. And on the one. not mixed up horizontal and vertical. And this is clear that this defines me two curves on the surface. So I have the horizontal piece and the vertical piece. Okay, the blue and the red are
when you do a drawing like this, it's oh, is it clear to everybody why I get the quadratic differential? Well, these two pictures define the quadratic differential. Because there is a Hubbard measure theorem, <laughs> but you can do otherwise in this situation. Uh, the square, the one by one square, carries a canonical quadratic differential dz square. And dz square, when you blew uh, the vertical side to vertical side, horizontal side to horizontal side, this is well defined globally. So you can just glue together the pieces of dz square. So the two things that I draw are two examples of the space of quadratic differentials. carefully, uh, it means that differential at this point is dz square over d, which is not holomorphic. So on, when you do a square by surface, you have a bunch of very special points that are points for which the angle around it is just pi. Around each point, I have a well-defined angle. I just count how many pieces I have. And here I have pi. And each angle pi corresponds to a pole of the quadratic. So which means that if I want to allow this kind of thing, there needs to be a puncture here if the differential needs to be a whole work on the surface. So this is allowed only if I have a puncture. So the number of these, so number of, so this is a pole, simple pole. So number of uh, simple pole should be smaller than the number of punctures I have. I do have a lot on my surface. Can you maybe break the red? So if you yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> For next time. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so I told you about the integer points. And because you have a notion of integer points, you have a notion of the volume. Uh, and this is how we compute the data volume, is the BGN is the asymptotic number of square by surfaces uh, with uh, so the yeah the area is just the number of squares so you just press it to the uh, so there is a normalization factor so one over n to uh, the good power so what's the good power uh, I guess it is the same N. And when I say Q and G N, I mean that I have less than N both the underlying topological surface as G and G, and I have at most N of these high and low similarities uh, with less than N squares. Okay. Yeah, so. yeah. So if you have such a configuration, and then you can read the greens and so on, but is it automatic? Is it automatic or easy to see when uh, is it possible to glue them together to get the surface work? Or can I always glue them? When you, have you, you know that for these two examples it works, but in general you have to really check. 
for each example. What do you mean check? If you can actually like do them in such a way to if you think of a chalk spot and use them together, you obtain a surface, right? Okay, so you know, they're like not possible like in prediction. In what? Why would it's you not possible to find an example that can be used? No, sorry, stupid question. Just to the, 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 there is a specification of the group. Each square it used to four neighbors. Possibly mm -hmm. with some. Yeah, you are yeah, allowed to do two okay. yourself. And you can actually like, you can build one square here, one square here, one square here, and continue and then so on. The point yeah. vertex would be more than four billion, for example. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, the, the, there are example of this here. Uh, Which corresponds to the higher order zero. Or yeah, if you look at this point here, uh -huh. and you start winding around, so this two is good here, and you continue winding around. Uh -huh. So this two is good here, so this is the point here, and this good here. So here you have a three pi angle. And the angle is directly related to the order of the zero. Yes. Three pi angle is the same thing as z z squared. Two pi angle is just a regular point. Mm -hmm. Three pi angle is a simple zero, and pi angle is a four. Okay. You directly read the order in the conventional yes. test. Yeah, maybe just a comment: if you glue them randomly, probably you will get something that is not connected. I mean, there is a condition on, on how you glue things in the squares. You might get just a bunch of surfaces. Okay. Mm, why not connect it? Because you glue the square, so it's in one piece. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you do not start with any square that you put in. Oh, glue. The specification okay. that you have not sure. But the connectedness, you, you should check. If you do a picture, you should check whether it's connected or not. Okay. Uh, so this is the starting point for our computation. Just that the uh, number the measurement volume is just the limit of this square five surface count. Uh, and then from here, uh, there is a, a way to make uh, packets or yeah, for clusters. Hmm? clusters. Clusters, yes. We will group services together in patterns. And these are two examples of patterns. And the pattern is exactly given by the horizontal multiplier. So, how does it work? Oh, this is how you prove the relation. That, uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, in our calculation, the contribution of one cluster is exactly given by the topological configuration of the multiplier. So, here what I want to do is just uh, look at, oh, I forgot my color. Look at blue. And what does it mean, look at blue? I mean, uh, consider what it is as a topological configuration. So, in the very same way, so I did not talk you much about the kind of computation, but it's basically the same. So, I will consider the blue curve as a multi curve on the topological surface, and I want to know what it looks like. And in order to know what it looks like, I need to understand uh, what are the so it's what are the pieces in between and what are the genus. And a multi curve is described by what is called sometimes a stable graph, sure if I have it. Uh, but I will tell you explicitly. So on this surface, what you do, you pick each uh, you pick the two blue and you cut along the blue and you look at what remains in the component. So, what would be the complement? And the complement is just a ribbon graph. And actually, it's a bunch of ribbon graphs. It does need to be connected. So it's a bunch of ribbon graphs, and the faces of the graph are glued together. So the, along the blue, you cut basically the surface, and what you see here, uh, the yeah. along the the boundary of the cylinder that I see here, uh, there is a bunch of edges. This is the same for the yeah. I believe that most of you know the struggle construction. So this is basically the same. You will look at the critical graph of the differential, and 
my aim is to describe what is this critical graph in this general, more general setting than in the trouble setting. And so the critical graph is just, yeah, you look at all the separatrices between the zeros and the poles, and you look at what they form as a graph on the surface. And you need to record the, yeah, how things are going together in CMRs. Uh, so let me do the picture for this. So on this side, so you, you imagine you travel along this side, which will be a face of my ribbon graph. So what do I see? I see one, two, three, one, two, three. So uh, it's genus zero, right? Uh, no, is it genus zero? I believe so. One, how do you do that? One, two, three. How do you do that? One, two, three. Okay. Uh, how do you make a picture of it? Uh, this should be a tree on the sphere. How many? Always, how many? Always two zeros. Because I have another with zero sphere. So this should help to make the picture. Uh, and in between, so this should be this picture here. But here I have three faces and not one. So this is the uh, one in the round. Should I prepare it more carefully when you come? So what, what do you want? What uh, will be the vertices? What will be the faces? The vertices will be the, verti the singularities of my differential. So mm -hmm. here I have two points on the boundary. And the edges are just the horizontal edges of my differential. Mm -hmm. And the faces will be the half cylinders. So uh -huh. this is the face. It might be genus one graph, which explains that why I'm not able to draw it on the sphere. Uh, one, ah, two, and then you do something like this. Yeah, maybe that's it. So you see one, two, three, and around you should see one, two, three, and three. So one of them is one, and one of them is three. And when you read the face of this graph, you should see one, two, three, one, two, three, which is this face. Yeah, I believe I wrote that it's genus one, but I did not make a. I lost my example. No. Uh, yeah, there is a genus one component. Uh, yeah, with one face. So g equal one and equal one on this. Oh, this is not, sorry. Let, let me call it g one and one. On this example, I have two components. There, I have the green components. That is the one I just draw, which is this part of the of the picture with, with one face, which is this half cylinder, and then all the rest is one graph. Um, so this is another graph, and this one is on the sphere. So this is the picture of the green. Sorry. So this is the green graph. I hope I did not mess up with the numbers. I think it's correct. Uh, and uh, the yellow graph, what it looks like. So you have three faces, which are the three half cylinders. Uh, and what are the verses? So there is one vertex starting here. Let me look at this. So this four is good here. Uh, and then this is the same point as here because these are identified. And this is the same point as uh, here. And 5 is good here. So this is one of the vertex. And there is another vertex that is this point here. So you have a rib the yellow part is a ribbon graph with two vertices as well, but with three faces and genus 0. Yeah, exercise, draw it. And the point is that I, I will completely ignore the ribbon graphs 
they will come up when I will want to do the counting, but what I want to record is not the precise structure of the ribbon graphs, it's just the way they are connected together. And this is what I call a stable graph. So there, here I have a pairing of the faces. I have a, a disconnected ribbon graph or a collection of ribbon graphs, and the faces are glued together. This face corresponding to this half center is glued to this one. So I have a pairing of the faces. And this is what's important. So what is the the graph, I have a genus 1, one face, genus 0, three faces, and the edges of my graph, so each component is a part of the, a collective component of the boundary, and I will draw edges uh, when I have faces that connect. So the balance is exactly given by the number of faces, and here you have no choice, it's blue like this. So this is my stable graph. And this is approximately clear, what is the stable graph? So you, you pick your quality differential and you pick the separate faces, this blue graph on your surface, uh, disconnected union of ribbon graphs, and you just record the blue. And here you can do the exercise and you get 0, 4 with two handles. So another stable graph. And the theorem? The contribution. So these are the clusters I was talking about before. So a cluster is the square tight surface for which you fix the stable graph. So the contribution to the asymptotics. So which asymptotics is here? And this is where there is an explicit formula. Uh, and then you will have to sum over all the, the graphs. But already for one given graph, it's not very fancy. So there is a combinatorial factor that I will just avoid. So there is a combinatorial. So uh, each cluster. So the cluster is given by a graph. And what is a graph is just something like this. And if you want to describe it, it's very simple. Uh, at each vertex, you have a given genus and a given number of, uh, yeah, the degree of the vertex, basically. And the genus of the graph should be two, if you are doing genus two. And the genus is the sum of the genera in the vertices plus the number of loops. So, because each loop here, we contribute one to the genus when we contribute it back. Uh, okay, and the contribution of each cluster, you have a So there is a coefficient that combinatorially depends on gamma. This is the rational number. And what is important is this fancy uh, thing. So you need to do, this is a transformation on polynomials. So there will be a polynomial in the parentheses. And z is an operator that takes each monomial and converts it into a zeta value. So there is a product over edges. So the so I, have, I will have a polynomial whose variables are indexed by the edges of my graph uh, gamma. My graph uh, stable graph gamma is stable graph as here. And then you get the famous polynomial Kozlovich polynomials. So these are the one I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, and here, uh, yeah, let me write it BB. But this is the underlying BB. Uh, what is this BB? So the variables are BB indexed by the edges, but uh, at each vertex, you have uh, you pick just the product of the variables around it. So if you have a vertex B, and here you have P1, P2, P3, BB is just uh, the triple B. E1, D, E2, D, E3. Uh, G, N, G, N is a multivariate polynomial with N, V variable. So you get just a good number of variables to fit in. And now we need to describe what are 
this for the local what is this? N G N of B1 B N. So this is a percentage for the nouns. Uh, and one way to say what they are is the the number of ribbon graphs you can build on a genus G surface with n faces whose uh, boundary has a given length. So and you, you look at the metric ribbon graphs. So I believe uh, you know what is this. The side intersection numbers. Yeah, yeah, they are the equations of the plant side classes intersection numbers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so generating polynomial of so what you get to mean by your integral? Is it just this is the sum integral of uh, yeah of integral of c one d one c n d n uh, over n d n and this is d one to the two d one d n to the two d n but there is a coefficient here that I don't remember. It's one over some factor or something. Yeah, okay. So, so. But yeah, this is the mm -hmm. And this, this is counting ribbon graphs. This is also counting ribbon graphs. So what do you want to be i to two here? Because when you define the polynomials in terms of ribbon graph counting, it's not clear that the polynomial only depends on even powers of the i, but this is the case. Mm -hmm. And the leading term is over like this, and links have, have been made with these side classes. You can, yeah, you can, there are basically two definitions. With this one, it's not clear that it's a polynomial, but actually, it's not, it's just the yeah, highest term in the asymptotic. And this one is another definition, and they match. Because the side classes are two forms, roughly. Uh, you, you want the, the sum of yeah, d1 to dn to be a good dimension. Here there is a sum over d1 to dn to d3g minus 3 percent. Yeah, let me say just in words how it works. Uh, 
because this is not very complicated to prove. What? It's an asynchronous away from it. There's no, there's no variables attached to it. Are you asking your graphs appearing? So? Yeah, it's a uh, given tile formalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's exactly constructing, you have something attached to vertices, <coughs> and then you sum more stable graphs, mm -hmm. product of weights attached to vertices, and product of certain weights attached to the edges. Mm -hmm. And um, it is proved that if the basic thing at the vertices satisfy it over a recursion, which is the case here because this written concept stuff, mm -hmm. uh, then the other thing also satisfies the worker recursion. It's just changing the initial data some twist. Okay. So that's. Uh, so this applies in this. I think so. Okay. We just have to ch check the weights for the edges. Uh -huh. Oh, this, 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 this is always going yeah. to be the same. Yeah. Like a delta function, so we can probably compute this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Oh, this is from my That's cool. There's no idea. But this other thing. It's at the very end you evaluate. Mm -hmm. You could do total to the z. Yeah. You could put it. You could put it in front of the sum of fat graphs, sum of stable graphs, and at the very end you evaluate. Yeah, yeah the, the Z you can even ignore it. It's a polynomial, but it's, it's just invariant from many times. So what you uh, the function of the Bs? That's and perfect. And, and perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. But the function of the Bs, so it's so this is yeah, the function of the Bs is uh, we, you, the coefficients are polynomials in the tag classes, and these coefficients you have some numbers. Some, some numbers. Some numbers. Okay, and, and that's what TR is computing for a very simple initial data. Mm -hmm. Okay, this looks interesting. Because from this formula, it's not clear how you transform it to make it a recursive version. So the thing, there is a Witten uh, conjecture and conservative theorem yep. telling you two ways to compute this Psi class. Yep. One is a case solution of KDE. Yep. The second is vr zero constraints. Topological recursion is equivalent to vr zero constraints. Mm -hmm. And so, and the, the, the little fear, I mean, it has been taken several years to understand it, but Somehow, if you have something that satisfies topological recursion, you make this kind of transform with sums over stable graphs. Uh -huh. uh, the answer still satisfies its topological recursion, but just for a certain twist of the initial data. Yeah, so the spectral code is different, yeah. and, but it's computable from, exactly. uh, from the explicit way you have. Exactly. Okay, this is one of them. Okay, questions? So, more computation to come? Because, yeah, the, 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 our aims were. Yeah, the, the ultimate goal in this is to compute the large genus asymptotic of this, but this sum is terrible, so it was hard to make a guess, but we have a guess for this. Mm -hmm. uh, the point is that the only stable graphs that contribute to the sum, of the sum of stable graphs are these guys with one vertex. Mm -hmm. And it's clear, yeah, you go up to genus 10 and you make computation and you see that the proportion is just like uh, 0 0.999. And for these graphs, the asymptotics can be computed uh, explicitly. So, we have for so this is funny because um, um, when uh, so there's two things. Matson and Weiss proved that the the, the, co the stable cohomology of the moduli space they describe mm -hmm. somehow what it is, and then Telemann used that to classify a cohomological field series. Mm -hmm. And somehow in this work, a note has been a bit taken by Mulasa and Dimitrescu, they're trying to do something, but somehow you have this big group which is acting on the commercial field series, which are commercial class that factorize nicely at the boundary. Okay. And part of this group is exactly this transformer stable graphs. Uh -huh. And if you want somehow to prove this kind of classification theorem that anything can be obtained by this type of action plus some other things, uh, somehow you seem to use one graph, which is infinite, which has one vertex. Uh -huh. oh, okay. I don't know if this is related to what. Oh, uh, to the fact that, the genus that it contributes only, only in the genus. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. The sum is. Uh, the number of turns in the sum of some of our stable graphs is the yeah. exponential number of them, but this is not linearly many of them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I have no real interpretation of this. 
Even on the geometric side, I don't even know how to read this word. of the multi-curve, mm -hmm. f of the length of that component. Mm -hmm. yeah. This satisfies geometric recursion. Okay. And so when you integrate, it satisfies the work recursion. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly done by twisting some of these twists which you do at the level of the integrals. Uh, there is a hyperbolic lift of this. And this is what is doing the inserting this test function of multi-curves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somehow the, the lift in hyperbolic geometry of the sum of stable graphs is the sum of simple logic curves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I see, okay. But the point is that B is not exactly uh, yeah. and, and, uh, and the, the question. It's a limit of. Yeah, exactly. So you, you can truncate, you can take yeah. a test function. Which and this satisfies the geometric equation. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then you would like to understand what happens of geometric yeah. equation when you start to take asymptotics. Yeah. That I'm not totally sure about. Okay. This is something, uh, the starting point. Uh -huh. Oh, and when you integrate, you naturally see actually some. If you take certain test functions, you actually see some zeta functions uh -huh. coming in. Uh -huh. And then there's two ways of computing this kind of integrals of these functions. Either you do a sum or stable graphs, or you do the top work recursion. Uh -huh. Do you remember the formula from the unit zero? Okay. Let's speak again. 